I was scrolling through the YouTubes one day and I found this video. Wait, 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 no, no, not that video. I found this video. This was when the words Pico 8 first grazed my ears. It was also around this time I started playing a game called Bellatro. Ugh. So I figured I'd see what Pico 8 was all about by making a Bellatro clone. For those who don't know what Pico 8 and Bellatro are, here's a quick rundown. Bellatro is this roguelike deck builder game where you play poker hands to progress through the rounds. Pico 8 is a game engine designed for fake nostalgia and has no shortage of limitations. I'm going to be limited to a 128 by 128 pixel screen, 16 colors, and 8,000 tokens of code. The first and most important feature of this Bellatro clone is a deck of cards. The plan is simple. Create a table of tables with each table representing a card in a normal 52 card deck. If you don't know what tables are, tables in Lua are like a list, but you can also have tables that behave like a dictionary. So each table inside of the list can have different key value pairs, like what suit it is, what rank it is, and how much score it gives. With this plan in mind, it was time to write my first lines of Lua code. It took me a few tries to get the hang of the syntax. Pretty soon, I ended up creating the deck successfully with all 52 cards printing to the console. I also found this RAND function, which looked like it would help me shuffle the deck of cards. And so I created a function that shuffled the deck of cards. Uh, delete. And then if we run it again, you can see that we're getting a random card every time. So for example, this would be the Queen of Diamonds. And so with the deck being shuffled, all I would have to do is deal eight of those cards to the player. And pretty soon we were playing Bellatro in the console. Oh, you see, this is like a two pair here. We're out here playing Bellatro before Bellatro is even visual. So far to test if everything is working, I'm just printing this information in the console. But I think it is now time to draw some stuff on the screen. Since I know that Pico 8 has a limit on the amount of sprites that can be created, I want to make sure that we're only creating sprites when we absolutely have to. So I was happy to come across this built-in function called RecFill, which meant I could programmatically create a background without having to use one of my sprite slots. And just like that, we had our first graphics. This is our background. But of course, these sprite slots have to be used at some point. And now was the time because we had to draw all 52 cards in the deck. After a bit of distraction and copy and paste, we ended up having 52 sprites. I really tried to draw the suits on the cards, but it's really difficult to fit all of that into an 8x8 sprite. So we're just going to have to determine the suit by looking at its color. So red equals hearts, orange equals diamonds, blue equals clothes and gray equals spades. I found the function that would help me display sprites on the screen, which is called spur or sprite. And pretty soon this happened. Load and run. Boom. But if I run it again, we get a new hand. Oh, so we got a heart flush here. You know what I mean? So now that we can see the cards on the screen, we need to detect input from the player. Normally Pico 8 is used by like game pads and controllers, but I'm a PC player and I play Bellatro with a mouse. Luckily, Pico 8 has an option called dev kit input mode, which means I can use my mouse as an input. And after enabling dev kit input mode, pretty soon I was able to detect the coordinates of my mouse position, but there is no mouse. And so I had this genius idea. Oh, you know what we can do? We we can make a mouse and render the mouse at the XY position constantly. I know it sounds so simple in hindsight, but I felt like a genius at the time. After borrowing the Pico 8 mouse design, guess what? Bucket fill. This happened. So does that work? <gasps> we got a mouse. Now that we have a mouse, we have to register clicks. More specifically, we have to register whether our mouse coordinates are within the bounds of a sprite. And this function seemed like the key to help me do that. This will not only help me understand which card is being selected, but this doesn't just apply to cards. This can apply to buttons, tarot cards, joker cards, and much more. And so after setting this up, we were now able to detect which card is being selected. Should be the jack, jack of hearts, yep. Seven of spades, 10 of spades. All I needed now was a bit of animation, and the easiest way to do that is just changing the Y value. The logic is this. If the card is selected, decrease the Y value. If it's deselected, increase the Y value. This did not come without a few bugs, but after fixing that, we were on to the next task, which was drawing our first buttons in the game, which are the play hand button and the discard button. All we have to do is draw the buttons and then perform some sort of action when the button is clicked. And in this scenario, for both the play card and the discard button, the logic is basically, hey, delete the selected cards from the hand and deal new cards to replace those cards. With this ability, it was time to work on scoring. This is where the next big piece of the puzzle comes in, which is detecting which hand the player is playing. I was dreading doing this since I thought this was going to be extremely complicated, but I had an idea that would make the process much easier. You see now, when I get dealt some cards, they're all out of order. So to solve this problem, I was going to need to add a sorting algorithm. I basically did insertion sort. I assigned a number to all of the ranks. So for example, 
a is 13 king is 12 all the way down to to two being one and so when i do insertion sort i'm looking at these numbers specifically to determine what the order should be now that my cards are sorted determining what hand the player is playing will be way simpler i ended up creating a bunch of helper functions that help determine whether the hand the player was playing contained a certain conditions like containing a flush or containing a straight this helped a lot because to detect a hand like a straight flush for example all i have to say is hey does this hand contain a straight and does it contain a flush if both conditions are correct then it's a straight flush after a bit of time i finished with all the hand types and this should be a royal flush phenomenal and i also added the ability to score the hands as well okay i just implemented adding the hand type to the score it'll go up here and add whatever the base chips and base molt is i basically just copy the same values from the game itself so if i click three we should see we're scoring a high card five times one and then now we see a pair 10 times two and then now we see a three of a kind 30 times three now it was time to improve the ui by adding crucial information that the player needs when they're playing the game i added a deck and the deck size you can also see that i added these letters here and if you play Bellatra before you probably already know what these letters mean h stands for hands d stands for discards and m stands for money i unfortunately had to make them letters because it's hard to fit long words on a 128 by 128 pixel screen without having it overlap with other parts of the ui and i also don't like a cluttered ui so i wanted to keep it as minimal as possible i also added which round you're currently on and the goal score which represents the score that you need to achieve to pass that round i decided to not add antes and blinds because we're keeping it simple here now that we have the basics of the ui going here it was time to recreate the part that makes Bellatro so special, and that is the shop. After drawing the shop, I hope the location looks great. Background colors ass though, holy sh**. And redrawing the shop again, I ended up with this. Alright, this is the new look. It's gonna work for now. You can also see that I added a reroll and a go next button, but reroll is useless without any special cards, and so it was finally time to fill the shop. The plan here is to recreate only three types of cards found in Bellatro, which are jokers, tarots, and planets. Jokers are gonna have white backgrounds planets are gonna have blue background parrots are gonna have like this tan background with that plan it was time to start drawing these special cards attempting to draw anything meaningful with only 8x8 pixel grid is close to impossible i wish i could have made these beautiful designs like the real game but with the limitations i have to go very abstract with my art here are the results we got regular jokers which just adds a flat amount of molt we also have the times molt we have plus 30 chip plus 60 chip plus 90 chip we also have these two question marks which are basically going to be random amount of chips or random amount of molt and there's going to be a cap and i just had to do do abstract art here i know it looks beautiful these are the planet cards and this would be a high card because it's just alone uh this would be a pair because it's two of the same this would be a two pair because it's one pair and another pair with three of a kind i did a stairs because i was like okay this is a straight this would be a flush red means flush this would be a full house so you see a three of a kind and a pair four of a kind they're all four the same we have a straight flush and then we have a royal flush now we got our tarot cards. This tarot card is going to increase the rank of two cards by one. There's a couple of tarot cards that convert your cards into whatever suit you want. Convert three cards to a heart. Diamond, club, spade. You can change two cards to mold cards. This is the bonus card. This one, very beautiful. It's times two monies. And then we have throw two cards into the bin. Or maybe like this. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's a trash can, right? So these are the cards that we're going to have. Now that the cards were all drawn out, before I'm able to render them into the shop, I need to add the ability to make money in the game because currently I just have four measly dollars to my name. So I decided to recreate the three main ways of making money in Bellatro, which are interest, money per hand remaining, and money earned per round. I decided to make the interest and the money earned per hand remaining work the same as Bellatro, but since we don't have blinds, I decided to make the money earned per round a little different. This is how the money earned per round is going to work. So we have rounds, right? If it's round one, we'll get $3. Round two, we'll get $4. Round three, we get $5. Round four, it's going to reset back to three so basically every third round is going to reset back to three so in this scenario after we play the current hand this three would turn into a two so we get two dollars here this round gives us four dollars so that's sixteen dollars now we also have interest so we have two dollars of interest at this point so that's eighteen dollars so we'd have eighteen dollars if this wins it so $18. Now that we have money flowing in, it's time to load the shop with cards. To not overcomplicate things, I decided that picking one random special card of each type would suffice. After adding buy buttons and price tags, we spend seven, we try to buy this. It says you don't have enough money to buy this. Get your money up. Now, all that was left was to render the special cards on the screen when they were bought and add some logic to make them actually do something. And this is how they were structured in the code. We have our special cards and each special card has its name, it has a price, 
has an effect. And so this is where like the action is going to happen. Right index, um, the description. I also added a type, which comes in handy when I want to do like if statements. For the Joker cards that I created, making the effects was pretty simple since all they did was change the score. I didn't make any crazy Jokers here. The planet cards were also simple since we just had to update the chips and molt and the level. But the major hurdle was the tarot cards. And at this point, I had to restructure a bit of the code to make it work out. But after a bit of time, they were finally done. And here is how they turned out. Very huge milestone. I have completed all of these tarot cards. And so you see that we get now a use button. I want to try to display as many tarot cards as possible just to show that it's working. So this is the delete two cards tarot card. So let's say I want to delete the sixes. So if we press delete, boom, and eight and four get presented and 50 is now the new deck size. To make a molt card, it kind of looks like this, right? Um, and this is the bonus card, but I don't have much space to do crazy drawings like that. So in order to know that you have a molt card, I'm basically going to add a red pixel on top right. Boom. And if I had the bonus chips, it would change to a blue pixel. So now this is looking for diamonds. We can make this a diamond as well. Three, nine, ace. You'll see that these change to diamonds. Boom. And now I can make a bigger flush. This is the hermit. So times two money. And when you buy it, it's going to deduct $4 first. So it's going to go to 48. Then it's going to add 20. 48 plus 20 is going to be 68. So if I buy this, you can see my money changes to 68. The tarot cards are working as expected. We have the sell button for all the cards max tarots max amount of jokers if i try to buy another tarot you see i'm gonna get an error you have reached the max amount of tarots we're getting to the point where we need to add some sound effects after messing around with the sound effects editor for a bit this is the result i was trying to make a sound effect like when the player wins around i have just finished adding some sound effects go for if we press play so that's the buy button and then that's the level up sound. Now I know some of you may be like, oh, is he going to recreate the song? Now the game was basically done, but we were missing the icing on the cake here, which is viewing the deck. This is very helpful in influencing the decisions you make during the game because it's not very fun to try to memorize all the cards that have been already discarded or played in a round. Maybe we can make all these twos hard. So if I look at the full deck now, you can see that we have four twos and they're all hearts. The game was going great. The game was looking solid until I saw this while play testing. Clubs, but maybe we should just start going towards a full heart. Flush here. Oh, wow. Wait, why is our score going negative? I already knew that Pico A had its limits. This is one limitation I was not expecting. And what's worse is that this limitation was written in the manual all along. So the minimum step is negative 32,768 and the maximum is 32,767.9999. It's probably a solution, right? But I'm at the point where it's not really worth it to like go crazy to make this perfect. So I think I'm just going to cap the score out. We won, and now you see we're at the cap. I really should have seen this coming, but at this point, I felt satisfied with what I created, and the whole goal was to experiment with Pico 8 and push it to its limits. And I feel like I did that on multiple occasions. But there was one thing missing. One thing that I had neglected for a whole month while recreating Bellatro. I've been working on this project for like a little less than a month, and I haven't even touched Bellatro. And so we got Bellatro demo, the side by side here. So let's see. Oh my God, this game is just so beautiful. Oh, and this shop looks so beautiful. Let's see how my shop looks. Oh yeah, compare this shop to this shop. I mean, come on. Mail and rebate, looking for Jack. We get the money. Okay, let, let me let me take out the, let's get this game out of here. After closing the chapter on making a Bellatro clone in Pico 8, it was time to enjoy the real game, but something felt different. I felt unstoppable. Two pair to the moon. So we get the two pair with the level up. 142, so your anus. Oh wait, whoa, rolling. Of course, freaking. Let's get. This is what I was getting. Glad more in time. Let's get it. Right? 4.5. Oh. 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 Chapes is 508. Like, what? This is the last round. So I just have to sell this guy. It's easy. What happens if I just play this four? Like, just one four. Oh my. Let's play this. Let's 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 get it back to the two pair. Oh god. Moral of the story. If you want to get better at Bellatro, recreate the game from scratch.